Hey, it's Becca. In today's video, I'll be painting our kitchen countertops. Let's talk countertops. Have you wanted to paint your countertops or do you know someone who wants to do theirs? If so, stick around and keep me company while I repaint ours. A little bit of a backstory. When we moved into our home, we had, uh, we have granite countertops. They are dark brown. It's the same granite we had in our last house. And I believe it's called Golden Beach. Like I said, it's really pretty, but after having it for so many years, I just wanted something different, lighter and brighter. So we had someone come out and do a template of our counters. And then we found one we wanted, but it was going to cost over $4,000 to replace them. And this was during the pandemic. And just after my husband and I chatted about it, we thought, is this really a smart way to spend money during such you know uncertain times? So we agreed to shelve the idea for a little bit, but I thought, let me see if there's another way I can get the look I want, just not so much money. Um, that's when I discovered going with epoxy. So you order it, uh, you have to, well, first thing you have to do is cover every single surface you have near where you're gonna have the epoxy because if it spills on any surface, you're in trouble. But you cover your floors, your cabinets, you sand your counters, you then do a bonding primer and then your base coat and then you add the epoxy. You mix together two parts and that's when the fun but also daunting part starts because you have a 30 to 45 minute window to play with the epoxy before it starts to harden. And that's when I added in the veining using, um, I believe it was a charcoal gray spray paint that I would spray on the end of a bamboo stick or a paint stick and drag it through the epoxy and then use a paintbrush to move it around along with a, um, a heat gun. But in the end, they were so pretty. Bright white, the gray veining, the exact look that I wanted. What I did not research well enough was how well they last. Now they are very durable still, you know, these years later. However, they started to amber or yellow pretty badly. I'll show you what they look like without a filter on it in just a minute. Uh, so I just can't take it anymore. I missed my bright white. I'm going to redo them, but I'm not using epoxy. I'm going with a polycrylic this time. It's food safe. And from what I understand, they will not yellow. So uh, this video is gonna have to be in two parts. So my apologies if this isn't something that interests you. We'll be back to decorating in a couple of weeks, uh, doing all things spring and fun. Uh, but for now, if, if this is something that interests you, uh, I hope you will stick around. All right, here's our countertop without a filter on, just so you can see how badly it has ambered. I'll bring you in closer so you can really see the difference. Now, the base coat of this is Bistro White, which is the same color as our backsplash and our cabinets. So that gives you an idea of how bad it really is, especially in the back corner. And I think that's because I always have a tray there and epoxy does not like to be suffocated, if you will. It likes to breathe or else it speeds up the ambering process from what I understand. Our island, the same thing has happened. Again, here's the Bistro White on the leg compared to the top. You can really see the difference. And then lastly, over on this side, again, this is what color it should be or once was compared to how it looks now. First, I'm gonna add plastic drop cloth to the floor, maybe cover the cabinets just to protect everything from any paint runoff. Then I'm gonna sand my counters using either the block or an orbital sander. It's just personal preference. Either method is going to have flying debris, which is why I recommend throwing on your work goggles or even your glasses and a mask just so it doesn't go flying up your nose or in your eyes. Once you're done sanding, I recommend using crud cutter to wipe off all your counters. That'll get up any loose debris, even grease marks that you didn't pick up. And then I'll wipe them off with these shop towels. These are my favorite. You can get them at Walmart, Home Depot, or Lowe's. Once that's done, then it's time to tape off anything like your stovetop or sink, faucets, etc. Then it's time to start painting. 
first I'm gonna add a layer of this bonding primer. This is a really good product. It will allow everything that you're placing on top to adhere really well. This is also a great product for your cabinets. If you're painting your cabinets and they're not real wood, if they're like a melamine, I'll be applying the bonding primer with this brush. It's my favorite brush. It's got a really comfortable handle and then a foam roller. Now, once my layer of bonding primer has dried for a few hours, I can then add my base coat, which will be my Bistro White. And then once that is dried, it's time for the fun part, which is adding in the veins. I'll be using craft paint, a glaze, sponges, a chip brush, duck feathers, and this misting bottle, and a few cloths. And then once all of that is done and dried, it's time to add a couple of layers of polycrylic. This is what's gonna be replacing the epoxy like I mentioned earlier. I like the fact that it won't yellow, it's food safe, and you can use it on your counters. But in between the coats of the polycrylic, I will sand just a little bit to make sure it's nice and smooth. Time to sand. And a little tip, I like to spray my counters down with a little bit of water before I start sanding. That helps minimize the powder flying up in the air. You can see by that pile of debris there, that's how much the wet sanding helps. Otherwise, all of that would have been dry going up into the air. Now I'm just gonna wipe all the counters down with the card cutter. As I mentioned earlier, this will just help clean up any sanding that I didn't get up the first time, along with any grease or fingerprints, etc. With the card cutter added and the counters dry, it's time to add a layer of the bonding primer. First I'll use my brush to cut in the corners and along the backsplash. Make sure you add a very thin coat of your bonding primer. I like to work in small sections and then I'll take my roller and go vertically, then horizontally, overlapping my sections as I go. Now that the bonding primer has been applied, just wanna show you what it looks like all over again. Just to reiterate, I added a very thin coat of the primer, the bonding primer. So thin that you can still see the veining. However, you can't see the yellow epoxy anymore, which makes me very happy. So now that that's been done, it's time to add my first coat of Valspar Bistro White. But before I do that, I'm going over the counters with a 220 grit sand block. This is just a good thing to do in general. It helps remove any little rough patches and it will allow your next layer of paint to go on a little bit better. After I sanded all the countertops, I then wiped them down again before adding my first coat of Bistro White. Now I'm applying it in the same fashion that I did the bonding primer, working in smaller sections, overlapping each section as I go.
Okay, first layer of paint has been applied, and to be honest, I was hoping I'd get away with just one coat, but unfortunately, I can already tell I'm going to have to add a second coat because I can still see those veins peeking through. I really wanted those covered up because I'm adding new veins in a different technique this time. So I really hope you'll join me next week as I continue the counter painting process. As always, I really appreciate your company and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.